Welcome to today's lesson on exothermic and endothermic reactions. Before we start, let's see if you can work out what the words exothermic and endothermic mean using their word stems. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to look at the picture and see if you can work it out. Excellent. Did you get it? Well, the exit is the door you usually go out of and thermal refers to heat. So exothermic would mean the release of heat to the surroundings. However, examiners do not credit heat on its own. So we must always refer to it as heat energy. So exothermic means the release of heat energy to the surroundings. Using the same logic, we go in through an entrance. So endothermic means the taking in or the absorbing of heat energy. So our challenge today will be to describe the difference between an exothermic and an endothermic reaction. And we will aspire to analyze data to determine if a reaction is exothermic or endothermic. Let's start with an exothermic reaction. Here we have chemicals A and B reacting to form C and D. If we look at the chemical energy store in the reactants and the products, we can see that the chemical energy store of A and B is greater than the chemical energy store of C and D. So some of the energy must be transferred to a different store. In the case of exothermic reactions, it is transferred to the thermal energy store. And we would see this as heat energy. As the reaction proceeded, we would observe an increase in temperature. So exothermic reactions are reactions which transfer heat energy to the surroundings and will be usually shown by an increase in temperature. Combustion is an exothermic reaction that you are probably very familiar with. Neutralisation is a reaction that you may have carried out in class, but you may not have measured the temperature change. This is something that you will do for the required practical that goes with this unit. Finally, oxidation. In the case of the one shown, rusting. All of these reactions are exothermic and all of them you would be able to measure an increase in the temperature. Let's look at combustion in more detail then. So methane, which is the gas that you use in your home for cooking, reacts with oxygen, which is needed for all combustion reactions. Before the chemical reaction takes place, the combined chemical energy store is greater than the energy store for the products. So in this case, we need to again loo, transfer some of the chemical energy into thermal energy. When this is transferred to thermal energy, we will see heat transferred to the surroundings and we would observe an increase in the temperature. This heat is what you might use to cook your dinner. So how are endothermic reactions different then? Well, let's start again with A and B. In A and B, the chemical energy store is much less than the chemical energy store in the products C and D. So we need to get some more chemical energy from somewhere. And the way that we do that is that we transfer thermal energy from the surrounding thermal energy store, and we convert that into chemical 
energy. When this happens, you will observe a decrease in the temperature. Oh, to recap, endothermic reactions. An endothermic reaction is one which absorbs heat energy from the surroundings. You would see this by a decrease in the temperature. Now, endothermic reactions are much less common than exothermic reactions. Thermal decomposition reactions are a good example that you might have seen in the science lessons that you've done at school. But photosynthesis is also another example of a reaction that takes in energy. Looking at the thermal decomposition reaction, then here the calcium carbonate will have a much lower chemical energy store than calcium oxide and carbon dioxide combined. So the reaction will take in thermal energy from the surrounding thermal energy store and convert this into chemical energy. Right, so where might we use exothermic and endothermic reactions? Some of them, such as hand warmers, are very common and I'm sure most of you have either seen these or used these on a cold day to keep your hands warm. The way in which they work is that when we activate them, a chemical reaction occurs, which is exothermic. That releases heat energy and that heat energy is what is used to warm up our hands. Something that you might not have come across before is this, a self-heating drinks can. Examiners love this. And if you don't believe me that they actually did exist, then click on the YouTube clip at the top of the Google form. These cans usually had two sections. In the bottom were two chemicals, often calcium oxide and water. In the top part of the can would be your coffee. When you press the bo button on the bottom of the can, the chemicals would be mixed together. These chemicals undergo an exothermic reaction and the heat energy released is used to heat up the coffee in the upper section of the can. Don't worry, they were perfectly safe and the coffee and the chemicals never mixed. Well, I'm sure you've all seen one of these, the sports injury pack. And if you've ever had to use one, then you would know that there are two pouches within the pack. When you squeeze the two pouches together, the chemicals mix and they undergo an endothermic reaction, absorbing heat energy from the surroundings and causing the temperature to decrease and become very cold. This is what you then use to treat your sports injury. So now for the exam question, what might this look like in the exam? Well, in this example, the examiner has provided details of an experiment carried out by the students. They have added spatulas of sodium hydrogen carbonate to hydrochloric acid, and they've measured the temperature at the beginning of the reaction and at the end. This is a three mark question. So we're gonna use bug. So we need to box the command word. In this case, it's describe. When we see a describe question, we know that we're going to be saying what you see. In this question, we've got an experiment and we've got some data. If we underline the keyword, we can see that the keyword is trends. So we're going to be looking at the data in the table. A glance back over the question shows us that this question is worth three marks. So we should be once looking to make three points to the examiner. OK, I'm going to give you four minutes. I want you to have a go at doing the question. Off you go.
how did you get on? Let's have a look at the mark scheme. So the first marking point was for saying that the more sodium hydrogen carbonate that you added, the greater the temperature change. The second mark was for saying that this only happened up to eight spatulas. And then finally, the third mark was for saying after eight spatulas, the temperature change remained constant. Okay, next part of the question then looks at what type of energy transfer has happened in this reaction. Remember, when you're doing this question, that you were comparing the starting temperature with the final temperature. If you go to your Google form then, this question is the last question on your Google form. So go complete all the questions and don't forget to press submit.